The next column in Lightroom is called the effects column. So if you want to go ahead and uh, minimize your color column down, open up your effects column and you're going to see five different sliders here. One for texture, one for clarity, one for grain, one for vignette, and one for dehaze. The first slider is texture. So let's just do exactly what I just said, pull it all the way up to see the most dramatic version. When the texture slider is at 100, this is what these buildings look like. You'll just see all those little minute details, the lines between the bricks, the spots on the building, those moldy parts that we keep calling them, those are just all really, really exacerbated. For architectural photos, you're going to use texture a lot because that's some of the that's one of the coolest things about these photos is that you can see how the buildings age and you can see all of the detail in like the brickwork and all of that. So we won't go all the way up, but I'll leave some texture on so you can see. Then if you pull texture all the way down, you'll notice the buildings just go and they're very, very smooth. I am going to use the same photo throughout this whole tutorial and I'll show you some other examples at the end just because I want you to see how all these effects work on the same picture. Bringing texture down of an architectural photo would probably not happen very much. This is more something that you could use if someone's skin was not doing exactly what you wanted it to do and you wanted it to look more smooth and finished. On this particular photo, it's great to see what it does, but it, it does not look natural in an architectural photo at all. Put that back where it goes. Also, when you're pulling these sliders, if you ever are trying to get back to zero and you can't quite get there, you can click the little number next to texture and type in a zero and hit enter. You can really type in any number that's on that scale. Um, so that's an option if you want to change it that way. Clarity is another slider that is in this effects column. Um, I was trying to think about exactly how I wanted to describe it. I do think, I call it kind of the drama effect. It really does emphasize texture, but it also emphasizes lights and darks. I used it for, uh, I oftentimes use it for clothing related things. For this, for example, I will switch to this picture for a second. If I pull Clarity all the way up, you see all the definition it gives to her jacket. This Dodgers jacket she's wearing, you can see all like the nooks and crannies and the reflections, it makes it look a lot more dramatic. It also did stuff to her face that I wouldn't want it to do. So that'd probably be something that I used actually as a mask on her jacket if I was gonna use it. But again, that's for a different day. Um, but let's go back to our architectural photo for a second. Pulling clarity all the way down, it does kind of look like there's just this misty, almost white, uh, transparent layer over the top. It kind of blurs details, um, almost makes it look fake and just really white and washed out. Um, pulling it all the way up again is like, it's kind of like the texture feature, but like a lot more dramatic. Um, this is something that I would use for architectural photos, but I would be really careful using clarity um, if you have someone's face in it because it can really create extremes that you don't want. Dehaze is a feature that going all the way up, it does make it more dramatic and pulling it all the way down basically blows out the photo. I'm not gonna lie, I don't use dehaze very much at all. Uh, some photographers use it, some editors use it, and to each their own. Uh, what you'll find as you really get into this industry and doing this is there's, a, there's multiple different ways to get where you wanna go. For me, dehaze ain't it, so I don't really use it. The vignette effect is exactly what you would think it would be. If you pull it all the way down, it's gonna give you a black vignette around the sides, um, kind of this like oval shape that only comes in from the corners. Most people know what a vignette looks like and pulling the vignette all the way to the right is gonna give it that white, um, that white effect in each of the corners. It almost looks like those old school oval portraits that you see of people from way back in the day um, where the, the sides are kind of hazy and light. That's what the vignette does. Um, that would be in very particular situations you'd use the vignette. I don't use that in normal photo editing almost ever. It's normally for something dramatic or for a specific purpose. Then grain is exactly what it sounds like it is. It makes your photo look grainy. Sometimes people use this to make their photos look more vintage. I find myself not using it very often just because we're taking such high quality photos that I really want them to look as high quality as they are. But this can be really useful if you love a photo and it's not 
quite usable, maybe you took it on your iPhone in bad lighting and you want a retro look, it can almost make photos that aren't the highest quality look intentionally retro sometimes. So that would be an occasion I would use it mainly, but grain is not something as a photographer that I really capitalize on very much. But if you like the look, go for it. The next column that we have is the detail column. And for this one, we're not gonna go into too much about the, these particular effects, but I'm just gonna show you what it offers. So in the detail column, you'll see a slider that says sharpening. That can be really good if you feel like you got most of the photo in focus, but maybe you missed something, or maybe you were just on the edge of having the photo in focus, but not quite. Sharpening can really help with that. Um, so just know that's there if you need it, and you can dig into more details in one of our other videos. This, this AI-related denoise feature can be really helpful in certain scenarios. This is AI's attempt to get out that, what they call noise in photography. And you can basically think about it as the visual version of that same white noise if you've ever you know, been trying sitting in class and listening to that air conditioner behind you or if you've ever had a video and you kind of hear like static, maybe the, the sound isn't that high quality and you kind of hear some static in the background or a radio station that you tune to, it's the visual version of that. It's just kind of like messy noise. And so if you want to get it out, this denoise AI feature can really help with that. Let's give it a try. So I hit denoise and it's asking me the amount I want to use on denoise. It defaults to 50%, so I'm just gonna follow their defa default suggestion. And then you can hit enhance. It'll tell you about how long it expects to take. It's not immediate. You can just watch your little blue wheel over here on the side. Okay, I'm really trying to see what it did. I used it, not gonna lie, in this particular scenario, I didn't see it do that much, but if I was looking at someone's face really close up or something that was like, wasn't an architectural building with a bunch of sky, um, I would notice it a lot more. So just know that that's there and then dig into some specific education about how that works for particular photos, but I just don't wanna load this down so much that we don't get through it. Adobe's really good about asking you for feedback, especially on these AI features that are newer. Don't be afraid to use that. In fact, you should. It's asking you, like, how did, how did this work for you? Or do you, do you wish that you had gotten a different result? Was this the result you're looking for? Fill that out because your program can get to know you and the overall AI technology can get better. So definitely use that because it's useful. Um, it's useful for them to make changes and uh, upgrade technology the way that the user needs it to be upgraded. Optics is the last column in this edit section. It's right below detail. So go ahead and close up your detail column and open up the optics column. I, when I say I'm going to breeze through this, I'm going to breeze through this. This is stuff for later down the line. You're not gonna need it right now unless you're really getting into the depths of deep, deep in the depths of editing, which is not really what this tutorial is for. So we will make sure that we do an, a video on that as well. Let me figure out what I can do in this photo to actually make it to where I can show you what these optics tools do. If I hit this remove chromatic aberration button right here, nothing really happens to my photo. So I need to edit my photo in a way to where I actually need help fixing that. So let me see what I can do. Okay, so I went in into the blues and actually tried to mess my photo up to where I would get some of this halo type line around the side of the building so that I could actually use that tool, that um, mono, chromatic aberration tool, can't even remember the name of it, that I could actually use that to show you what it does. So I needed to make this photo really dramatic in order to give myself that kind of halo type line outside the building. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I mean. Command plus will get you there. And then you can actually just click on the photo and drag it so that you can see, zoom in. Okay, I'm gonna zoom all the way in. You'll see this halo type line around the side. So what I did to get that was I pulled the luminance all the way down on my blues because I know the contrast between the building and the sky would be so ridiculous that it would cause a problem. So now I'm gonna go back down to this mon remove monochromatic aberration around the side. I don't know what the word aberration actually means. I probably should. All I know is that it kind of helps fix a halo when, when there's like a stark difference in color up next to an object or a person. 
So I'm gonna hit the remove chromatic aberration button. Oh, look, it's gonna tell me what it means. It says reduces color fringing most commonly found around bright lights and sharp edges. Use the remove chromatic aberration option to remove color fringing caused by lenses. That's the phrase I was looking for, color fringing. So you'll see that mine does have exactly what they're talking about. It's got that kind of stark difference between the sky and the building. I'm gonna hit remove chromatic aberration. And you'll see those little tiny white lines that were right around the building. It kind of removed those to create less contrast. You have to really be looking to see that work. Again, know it's there. It's something to look up in a different tutorial, but we don't need it right now. Same thing with this enable lens correction, not for today's tutorial.